Alright guys, Tactical Bit here back again today. Hope you're all enjoying your Saturday so far. A couple of interesting things to talk about today. First of all, thank you for 17,500 subscribers. Of course, it's been a pretty long few weeks with no announcements regarding the CDL, but still, pretty cool milestone. Three quarters of the way to 20,000, so thanks very much for that. If you guys haven't subscribed already and you're looking for more of this type of content over the coming days and coming weeks and coming months, whatever, um, I'll always uh, greatly consider a subscription, like on the video, all that good stuff. Today, a couple of interesting topics. First of all, starting with this from Matthew Formal Piper. So um, thanks to those of you who pointed this out to me, this whole situation really, with uh, Formal getting sponsored by this um, interesting and kind of sketchy for a lot of people's <laughs> estimations, gambling site called Rubet. Now, first of all, there's a few questions to bring up here. Like, firstly, is this even sanctioned and allowed by the CDL rules? You could say that given the CDLs on hold, maybe Formal can get away with this stuff. But let's not forget, there was uh, rumours, or at least it's kind of widely known but not really explicitly known, that the pros cannot stream money tens or for, you know, tens for money or whatever because it's considered to be by Activision gambling or whatever and you can't promote that stuff on your stream. That's what Crim6 and the other pros were talking about a long time ago. So I highly doubt that something like this, which looks kind of like Candy Crush related, is going to be allowed to, you know, to be sponsored by... So, look, if it's not allowed, Activision might reach out to Formal when they finally do announce what's happening with the CDL and get back on board that train. They might say to Formal, look, this isn't allowed, these are the terms of service, uh, unlucky, you've got to revoke the sponsorship and maybe pay somewhat of a fine. That's probably a secondary issue. The major issue, in my opinion, is the moral side of this. Of course, these companies are paying Formal a fat bank account. There's no denying that he was doing tweets like this. $250 giveaway to one lucky person, you know, person, courtesy of Rubet. Follow them and reply to this tweet with your username to be ended. Winner picked uh, tomorrow, actually. So the opportunity is still there. I'm definitely gonna, not going to promote a website like this because um definitely seems very sketchy to me. Now, it depends on Formal situation here. Like, I'm kind of, um I'm happy to see more esports betting companies coming into the industry because it definitely helps promote esports and gives another way to value ads as long as it's done responsibly i don't really have an issue with gambling becoming more legalized in the states even though i'm not going to explicitly promote it or anything but i don't mind that as a business model this stuff is like you know this obviously is an esports betting related so that's where the line maybe has to be drawn in my opinion it also depends what formal's audience and the analytics look like on my channel i'm kind of surprised only three percent of my audience is under 18 so you know good afternoon good evening if that's one of you guys but that's a pretty low percentage i don't know if it's similar with formal i imagine it's kind of higher but uh you know who knows depends what what's happening on twitch and i'm not exactly sure what the analytics even show whether they show all those details over there like you YouTube does. So, yeah, of course, there's a moral question. I'm sure you guys will have your thoughts in the comment section below. Most people are probably saying, like, this isn't really a great look, but uh, I'm sure the money is great. So, you've got to balance things. Maybe it's only for a fairly short period of time and formal things after a few months, people will just forget about it and move on with their life. You don't want to feel like a tea, Martin, because um, that's never a good look. So, moving on from that, then the main topic I wanted to discuss today was this from Spacely versus Gorgo Knight. This little spat they had on Twitter, kind of entertaining. Gorgo Knight, kind of well known amateur player, and Spacely, despite never having won a championship, pretty reputable professional Call of Duty player on the Gen G, of t Gen G team, of course, last year in Black Ops 4 that had so much success but didn't quite win a championship. So, these two guys going at it on Twitter, pretty entertaining back and forth they have here. So, um, Gorgo Knight doesn't reckon he's very good. Spacely's like, yep, you're a crap, mate. Um, Gorgo Knight then says, the difference between me and you is, I admit I'm not good. You're so deluded, you truthfully believe you're talented. Try playing without drugs and see if you ever spawn in at the venue again. So, this is pretty out there from Gorgo Knight saying like, um, you know, I at least admit I'm not a very good player. You actually think you're talented and you're an Addy bro. That's the only reason why you do any good. So, pretty out there statement. Spacey then replies with this, do you though, because in your D in my DMs you're extremely talented supposedly, so this is that image slightly, slightly larger here, so back last year, May 22nd, 24th, 2019, that's actually my birthday, um, but <laughs> you know, whatever, I need a team for the open, I haven't really hit anyone else up with it yet, no one to play with, hit me up, I'll run a Sorgo or Maddox, just let me know, trying to get the dug, I'm extremely talented, had a lot of personal stuff going on the last two months, so Pretty funny that he DM'd that to Spacey last year, and then as it turns out, um, now he, you know he's talking trash on Twitter. Hey man, my stock was low. I was told to come to you. That was a year ago. Things have changed. I think this is probably when uh, Spacey got released from Genji, or at least he got put on the bench last year. Because um, I think they put him on the bench, then they brought him back, then they benched him again for champs and later in the year, whatever. 
Pretty interesting. We'll have a look at that in a second. That was a year ago. Things have changed. You were pretty good at collecting the bag. You truthfully believe you blonged on Gen G still for some reason. It's comedy to me. You need to put down the sticks ASAP. Then Spacely replies with it. This basically shuts Gorgo Knight up, and I don't think he responded anymore from this. 11 in 1, best pro league record. They dropped me at 6 in 1, went 3 in 5 without me, almost didn't make playoffs, picked me back up to save the record and go 4 and 0, 16 and 0 in S&D maps played at the pro league. That's actually legit, something incredible. I think the um, the opening 6 in 1, Genji were like 11 in 0 in search and destroy. They get rid of Spacely, um, and then they the rest of their matches they don't do so well anymore. They bring Spacely back and win all of their Pro League S&Ds from then on. Didn't do so well in their search and destroys. They weren't undefeated at lands, but they were still pretty damn good. But in the league, they were just undefeated in search and destroy. It's pretty remarkable. That's my last Pro League record. You haven't done anything. Worry about yourself before you, you know, start talking trash at me. Maka says they wouldn't have got it handed to them at champs with you either. Put some respect on the name. Um, Gorgo real quiet now. So quite of an entertaining little drama here that went back and forth on Twitter. It doesn't seem like Gorgo Knight replied anymore as far as I'm aware. So uh, yeah, that's an unfortunate situation. But yeah, it's basically got to shut him up pretty good right there. So let's have a look through Knight's uh, placings throughout his career. So this is what we're looking at here. Back in the Infinite Warfare days, Anaheim, World War II, playing some of these Opens. Black Ops 4 got some results on this UYU team, at least they got on the team. Recently on this Team War squad at the LA Open as well, but you know nothing particularly special happened. And after that, they dropped this entire team and picked up their European squad. So you know, he actually did get onto the Midnight Esports team. I actually forgot about that when he got subbed in for this team at the time. But they didn't have the great results. You know, Okay, top 12 at CWL London, not an absolute disaster. But yeah, I remember when they did sub him in here. But you know, things didn't really work out too well. And since then, it's kind of been downhill. So yeah. Yes, Spacely hasn't won any championships in his career, but in terms of overall playability and what this guy has stood for, and honestly, there's a lot of me that says that throughout parts of Call of Duty history, if you were building a team and you needed an in-game leadership type figure, which maybe isn't so necessary anymore, but you needed a guy that sometimes would slay out pretty hard, but you know, it was pretty inconsistent in the slaying department, but he wasn't one of your really well-known IGLs, like he's not an incredibly experienced player, but he could definitely put together a squad that could get things done. And if anything, Spacely throughout his career has been kind of underrated in that sense. Um, the fact that he consistently puts together teams over the years that are at least somewhat competitive. So... We see him playing way back in the day when Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 3, Modern, you know, Black Ops 2. Goes on this most wanted team, classic slacked huddle and spacely, come third at a couple of events, then into the Advanced Warfare Infinite Warfare seasons, you can just about see that. Team Justice, some pretty well-known teams, top six of the world final, so getting there to some degree competitiveness, and then the Luminosity team in Black Ops 3, so you've got to respect him that he's done some decent things throughout his career. You know, the Saint Study Nameless team there, that good result, I think it was at Anaheim there, their good run, didn't do so well at the World Championships. Infinite Warfare wasn't as good, but he got some, you know, as a Gorgo said, pretty good at collecting the bag is basically getting these opportunities on G2, Ghost Gaming as well, the latter half of Infinite Warfare wasn't the greatest year for him, then into World War 2, then they had that Elevate team which had such a good result of the World Championship um, this team with Major Maniac Morks and Proto, that kind of started the run that they went into with Gen G in the next year, when they did of course bring, uh, well when Team Spacely got picked up by Gen G for the Pro League but yeah, this Elevate team did some good things at the World Championship, they knocked out a couple of teams that they weren't expected to for sure given the calibre of this squad they go on to place top eight of that event so all things considered pretty good career from Spacely then he goes into the straight ribbon team at the start of the year they then after the Las Vegas event they move away from them team Space he gets the whole team named after him Major Maniac Morks Havoc and Nagafen of course then they bring in Envoy for um for Spacely or a little bit later because they play the whole Pro League with him as I say undefeated in Search and Destroy then Envoy comes in Spacely then comes back in the squad for Nagafen a little bit later on so they do a little bit of a flip flop they come top four in the Pro League in the end then he ends up playing on Mazer Gaming because they dropped him for that team the latter half of the year when Genji had that awful result top 32 at the World Championship so you know, on this team, it was pretty clear to me that Spacely definitely had a pretty big impact on how these guys were playing in terms of their search and destroy. And without him, they weren't anywhere near as good, to be honest. Even though on paper, he wasn't putting up the best stats, 
pretty clear that Spacey had a pretty big impact on how well this team was doing overall. Then on that Mazer Gaming team, they had some decent results as well. So far in Modern Warfare, it hasn't been so pretty for him. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to land anywhere, at least from his perspective, it's unfortunate. And he's someone that you could consider. Nowadays, though, as I say, the game maybe has moved on a little bit in terms of what players feel like they need out of an IGL-type figure. You look at Atlanta Phase, do you even need that type of player that plays that role in the team? Maybe it's a new era of Call of Duty in that sense, and that's why Spatially hasn't really been getting as many opportunities. But, you know, I think, think Gorgo Knight is pretty optimistic saying what he said right here. Just one thing, or one more, two more things to mention here before we finish off. This comes out from Paradox. They made some updates to the Codcaster. Here we are from Benson EU. So you guys might remember, you look at the Codcaster, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you get the name of the player, you get a little player card, you get a picture of them if you're actually in the professional stuff, you get their name, you get what weapon they're using, how many bullets they've got left. However, they have now added to that player card the KD, which is a good in, which is a good impact, right? Because, unfortunately, they still kind of like, at the top of the screen, bringing up the player pictures rather than having the scoreboard there because they want to promote player characters and all these personalities and stuff like that. They don't always bring up the scoreboard at the top of the screen. At least I think Paradox has directions not to always have it there. So at least now, in the bottom right-hand corner, we'll always be able to see the KD of the player we're on and, you know, can see what kill streak they're on and all of this kind of stuff, which is fantastic. We definitely need to see stuff like that because it takes all the context away from the game if you can't see what kill streak someone's on and whether they're on a big death streak, whether they're double positive, double negative. You need this kind of info to build a story in your mind of how the game is going. So definitely an important thing to add there. So thanks for Paradox for pointing that out on Twitter. Also wanted to mention this as well. Esports, uh, ESPN Esports even, are running their annual esports 64 thing so they bring up um effectively they get 64 like professional athletes or you know esports athletes whatever I don't know why they call them athletes don't know why I even said that to be fair but they bring up these guys they rank them and they have like a seeding then they bring them up and face off against each other in like twitter polls and usually it's like scump at the top and then you'll get guys like shroud or maybe dr disrespect or something so formal ended up taking this one down but just to keep this in mind because if you want to you want to vote for the call of duty pros and the call of duty personalities Keep an eye on ESPN, ESPN underscore esports on Twitter. They're putting up these polls all the time. And um, it's usually the Huntsman now and formerly Optic guys that tend to get towards the top. I'm sure Scump is always up there. Scump versus Formal, I think it was even one of the years. So unfortunately, Formal falls a little bit short on that front. But still, an entertaining thing to keep your eyes on. They usually do this once a year. So, uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching as always. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.